well, we are here. This is day one of The Great Experiment. Thanks for doing this with me and 5,000 others across the country. March 1 to 10, we are going to press in in a deep way. You know what the five commitments are. They're on the website, and we've talked about them here. And uh, these are uh, perhaps unusual for our day and age among Christians in the West. But it's very normal to have this kind of more intense effort in seeking after the Lord in the global church and even in our own history. And this is what we're trying to stir up and to do and see what is it like? What does God do? How are our lives different? How is the community different? How is the nation different when we press in with him to the Lord with more energy than maybe we normally do? There is a difference. And uh, I'm persuaded from the scriptures and from history that if we press in with the same amount of focus and effort that we've seen in uh, past times and in the scriptures, we'll see God do something absolutely amazing. This doesn't mean you earn your salvation. You never merit anything. But there are conditions that the Lord wants us to meet in order for him to work. Uh, many people from the last great experiment talked about how their lives were so much different. They felt much more of God. They saw him answer prayers and other good things happen because they are spending more time drawing close to him. This practice of having morning and evening devotions, which we're doing during these 10 days, it's uh, unusual for Christians now, but it's been common uh, for so many uh, years in our history. Even the great um, um, English preacher, Baptist preacher from the 19th century, Charles Spurgeon, had a devotional called Morning and Evening because that's what people did. You'd have morning devotions and evening devotions, but now many of us in the West, we may not make time for devotions even once a day. And what it means is we're not as strong. We're not as strong as we otherwise could be. But we have time praying and reading the scriptures, listening to uh, worship music. It makes a big difference. And there are a lot of resources at dayandnight.org to help you get better with that. Sometimes it's hard for people, and what do I do during all of this? And just reading the scriptures, putting on some praise music from YouTube, or whatever else does absolute wonders. And just learning how to pray better. There's a lot of resources there. But it takes work, and uh, as you lean into it and do more and investigate, um, God will bless you. You'll become stronger in your prayers and uh, be able to understand the scriptures uh, more. I was reading this morning from Isaiah 8. It says, For the Lord spoke thus to me with his strong hand upon me and warned me not to walk in the way of this people, saying, Do not call conspiracy all that this people calls conspiracy, and do not fear what they fear, nor be in dread. But the Lord of hosts, him you shall honor as holy. Let him be your fear and let him be your dread. Uh, I thought of sharing that this morning because even though a lot of other Christians may not uh, press in the way we're looking to do, we don't judge them for it. We bless them. But let the, we shouldn't let that keep us from trusting God and uh, doing a lot to draw close to him. So as you repent of your sins every morning, as you ask the Holy Spirit what he'd have you do and follow up on that, and as you work on your Joshua faith challenge, God will reward you. He will bless you. Thanks for doing this journey with me and the many others. And may the Lord bless you and your family and the nation. God bless.